Hi guys, this is Ranjit and in this video, let's do a FAQ video on this Pixel 6a smartphone. And I've been actually using this smartphone with my primary son, that is Airtel, for the last six days. So I've got a bunch of questions that many of you had. Took about 15 odd questions and yes, we're going to talk about all the things like battery life, heating issues and all that. So let's get on with the same. And the first question that I got, this is from Sagar. He's saying, I've used the Pixel 4a for past two years, though its specs on paper look okay cache but the feel and experience i got uh, far far has excelled with time uh, timely updates and lag free experience and the great camera don't you think other android brands should also focus on the user experience that can make i completely agree and that is where the pixel stands i would say it's all about the end user experience that way i would say uh, the nothing phone is also going in that way it's just not just specs and to some extent even the motorola phones i would say in the specs they are not the best but they talk uh, they concentrate a lot about the user experience and it's the same thing with this one and if you see my unboxing video again watch that video to get a context brilliant phone i would say brilliant feels great in the hand and stuff and the end user experience is very very good on the smartphone it gets all the basics right i was worried how will be the call quality and all of those things and if there are any major bugs because i've heard a lot of bugs with the original pixel 6 and 6 pro but last six days with my primary sim the cell quality is very good wi-fi calling was good so it gets the basic right but again there are some things that i uh, did not like on the smartphone so might be a deal breaker so stay tuned for that but yeah other manufacturers instead of just giving um, stupid gimmicky stuff like 12 gigabytes of ram but ram management works like a 4 gigabyte ram phone in, in india specifically this is happening a lot with chinese uh, smartphone they just give a lot of specs but the phone is simply not optimized or anything and just after four months they launch a new uh, variant and forget about that phone but here i would say pixel is an exception i would say uh, uh, it feel, it felt like a flagship smartphone compact flagship uh, uh, smartphone i would say Anyways, moving to the next one. This is by uh, Anirod. Uh, will Google uh, ever learn to price the devices in India? He's talking about the pricing in India. This is at 44,000 in India. Uh, they either tend to avoid Indian market by not uh, releasing their phones or even if they do that, it's not aff uh, affordable. Anirod, I completely agree with you on this point. Uh, Google needs to be a little bit more aggressive in India with the smartphone. For example, I'm also testing the Nothing phone, so let's talk about this. In Europe, this Nothing One and the Pixel uh, 6a are priced identically. It's the same price. Uh, but in India, if you notice, the Nothing phone starts at 32,000, but this one starts at 44,000. And you might consider why is Google taking a lot of profits or something like that? Skimming is off? No, nothing like that. <laughs> nothing like that, yeah. The thing is that the Nothing phone is actually manufactured in India, in Tamil Nadu actually. And because of that, uh, it does not have to pay import taxes. And in fact, it gets a little bit more subsidies. That's why they are able to price it this aggressively. But Google is not doing that with the Pixel. This is actually made in Vietnam. So they are importing apart from GST. So they have to pay import tax. Hence the price is uh, inflated. I think so if Google is serious in India, the smartphone is excellent. If it would have been priced similar to the nothing, I would say 32 or even 34,000, it would have been amazing. But the reality is that in India, it's 44. And let's not talk about offers and stuff like that. I'm just talking about the regular price. The problem is that as they are not manufacturing it in India, that's the issue. And if Google wants to get serious in India, India is a very price sensitive market. I review a lot of smartphones and I, thought, I know that users will simply opt for a different brand. If even the price difference is two and a half to three thousand and here the pricing uh, gap is actually too high for what Pixel offers. So unless uh, Google gets serious in India and starts manufacturing their Pixel phones in India, I think so this Pixel smartphones will be a very small niche, le less than one percent of the market like tech enthusiasts like me or some of you who are watching. General users looking at that price point will just simply not even give a try. Uh, and again, they'll miss on the pure uh, Google experience that these Pixel smartphones offer. So yeah, that's the sad trend. I hope Google gets serious about that in India. Unless they start manufacturing in India, the prices will not come down because the import duties plus GST is a huge bummer. 
Anyways, moving to the next one. This is by Arnav. Uh, is there any heating issues and how is the battery life, especially on mobile data? Okay, uh, regarding the battery life, the battery life was surprisingly good on this one. I was worried because it's having a tensor chip. It's basically Exynos 2100 with modifications. Uh, but the battery life is actually pretty decent. Again, guys, battery life... Uh, It'll easily last you a full working day. That's not a problem. In SOT, anywhere from 5 hours to 10 hours, you'll get based on what you're doing. Uh, and in Wi-Fi, the battery life is fabulous, I would say. You can get even about 8.5 hours of SOT on this one. But the problem is that uh, when I'm using it with mobile data, the battery life falls. And if you've uh, um, uh, asked about the heating issue, I'm noticing that heating issue on this left rim, this becomes actually pretty warm, even just about 30, 40 seconds of usage on mobile data. So yes, the heating is uh, there. And in fact, I did some gaming. I generally do not do gaming. I played Call of Duty on this one continuously for 15 minutes. And yes, the back became pretty warm to touch. This reminds me of the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra, which I had tested last year. That also had the Exynos 2100. And that used to also get pretty hot with even general usage. I'm not talking about gaming, even with general usage on mobile data, just uh, doing WhatsApp, Twitter, etc. Browsing a website for a minute or something. This area was getting warm. So that is happening quite a bit on the smartphone. And generally when that happens, when the signal is not that great, the battery drain is also higher. So yes, there is that slight, I won't say it's totally heating, but the phone feels that when you're mobile data and using, it has fever. Whenever you touch this area, it just feels too warm. And this is not even summer, guys. I don't know what will happen in summers. Uh, moving to the next one, this is by Vedan. This is a very a weird kind of a question, but let's let's take this. Would you buy the 6A if you were forced to use it for minimum for three years? Why will you be forced to use it? My question, you have too many choices, buy whatever you want. Okay, anyways, because I don't change my phone often, it has to last for three years, uh, at least in every department, including software experience and responsive. Okay, moving to software experience and responsiveness, there you don't have to worry about it uh, because the experience is very, very good. Uh, it's very, very fluid smartphone, no lag or anything that you will notice. And this will age very well uh, uh, without any issue. So that way, three years, no issues. You will not notice that UI lag or whatever because this... Tensor chip is actually a flagship chip, so don't worry. And again, this phone is simply not pushing that much also. Uh, it's just on 60 hertz, so it's not even pushing 120. So that way it is good. But uh, as I've told you, uh, that heating issue on mobile data is definitely there. If you notice this year, I didn't mention about the heating issues on any um, uh, major smartphones when I was using. Yes, while charging, many of them get warm, but in general usage, most of the smartphones do not feel that warm when I was using. But here, again, this, Again, I noticed that heating uh, on uh, the smartphone with mobile data. So that's the only worry. If you're mostly using the smartphone in Wi-Fi, let's say in your office, you have good Wi-Fi in your home, you have, have uh, good Wi-Fi, won't be worried. Uh, that's not an issue. But if you're using majority on mobile data, that heating is the only thing that is worrying me. Age-wise, uh, this will easily age for three years, more than three years. And build quality is fabulous. The build quality is something that is amazing on this one. Anyways, moving to the next one. Uh, this is by Jitender. How is the service center and support of Pixel phones? Uh, is part replacement and extended warranty uh, as expensive on the iPhone in India? How many service centers are there? Regarding service centers, guys, I don't know how many in total service centers are there. Uh, and uh, But they are limited service centers. And again, these are not exclusive Google service centers, guys. These are third-party service centers. And I've heard mixed results. On big cities, sometimes it's okay. But again, there is waiting time if there is a major component uh, problem or something because they will order it and you'll get it and something like that so not a seamless experience i would say uh, but yes there are service centers if you're in a big city it'll be okay but i don't know if you are living in smaller cities or something like that again uh, the service centers are not own service centers like samsung has their own centers motorola asus etc they have their own service these are third party uh, service centers that uh, you have uh, this is by Akhil. Uh, how is the tensor chip in comparison to the Snapdragon uh, uh, 888? Is an Exynos at the core? Yes. Uh, so are there any similar heating issues and throttling that we have seen in previous Exynos chip? Uh, this is uh, not Snapdragon 888. This is, uh, I would say, uh, Exynos 2100. In fact, 
this Google Tensor chip is nothing but the Exynos 2100 that was made by Samsung. But there are some Google's modification on uh, this one. So this is not exactly Snapdragon 888 uh, kind of a performance. I would say slightly lower than that. That's not a problem because that speed is never an issue on this smartphone. Everything you uh, push or uh, load or anything loads very quickly. So that's not an issue. The only thing is that some of the heating issues that we had on the Exynos 2100 are still there on. It's not as bad as the Exynos 2100 when initially it came out. I think so they fixed it with a lot of software update because now this chip also is almost a one year old, but still, especially uh, on mobile data. Yes, this heats up. And also if you are a person who games a lot, heavy gaming, then I will not recommend you this phone because throttling I did notice even on Call of Duty. I played, I must have played just about three games, 15, 18 minutes or something. And after the second game in some of the areas where there are a lot of action happening and the phone was warm, got pretty warm. I was noticing some frame drops. So yes, if you push it a, a lot, you will notice the throttling issue. In general, regular usage, I did not notice the throttling issue. But yes, while gaming, I did notice. So, so for gaming, I will not, if you are a hardcore gamer or something, do a lot of gaming, then I will simply not recommend this phone. Ah, at this price point, you have far, far, far better smartphone if you just want gaming. Uh, this is by Ayush. Uh, just uh, clarify the battery and display situation. Any bugs that you noticed? Uh, surprisingly, I haven't noticed that many bugs. I was worried about that one, that this smartphone will have too many bugs, uh, like Pixel 6 uh, or the 6 Pro had. Uh, that way, it is good. Uh, and even display, guys, display is fine. I don't have a, it's just let's let's get it right. It's a 60 hertz display and a decent AMOLED screen. I did not have a problem with the display. Uh, yes, it's not super, super bright like a true flagship. Outdoors, if you go, it is visible, but I wished it was even brighter considering that it's costing 40,000 and above. But general, in general usage, I did not have a problem with the display. The touch response is not an issue. So yes, it's a 60 hertz display. Let's get it right. It's not 90 or 120, but display, I do not have a problem. And again, surprisingly, in, it's, it's been six days uh, with my primary SIM and I haven't noticed any bugs on this one. Some of you were even asking about the fingerprint scanner. Fingerprint scanner also, guys, I don't have a problem with the fingerprint scanner. Uh, as you can see, it's not super, super fast, but I think so. Even Samsung phones, it's you have to place the finger your fingerprint half a second because of the say, higher security. This also has the M2 chip. So let's not just compare with the cheap, cheap Chinese smartphone where fingerprint kind of, if you just do like this, it unlocks. Here, yes, half half a second you have to place it. If, I, if you just remove it, it doesn't work. So that way it's not a problem. Display also, to be frank, I don't have a problem, but let's just get it right. It's a 60 hertz display. And if you start comparing it with 120, 144 hertz, then yes, you will notice the difference. Anyways, moving to the next one. This is by Jane. Network co coverage and stability are the major concerns with Exynos uh, modems, along with heating any major software. Software bugs, as of now, I haven't noticed any deal breaking bugs or something. I was expecting a, a lot more bugs to be frank, but surprised. I think so they have polished it. Uh, because uh, the Pixel 6 and the 6 Pro have been launched so long time. I think so. All the bugs are, are fixed and that's why uh, they have released this one. So no major software bugs that I've noticed till now on this smartphone. In fact, on the nothing phone, I have noticed a lot more bugs compared to this one. Uh, network coverage and stability here I was surprised actually very very good again guys as it's having only one physical sim I'm just test I have tested this with just Airtel uh, my primary sim used it on mobile data Wi-Fi calling etc even in areas where I have very low uh, network reception and I have to say in terms of network reception and call quality this is exceptional this is like a flagship this is a flagship much much I did not expect this good call quality on this one even in areas where I was not having good connection and Wi-Fi calling also works very well again but I only tested this with Airtel so that way network issues not a problem but as I've told you in very no network area when it's on mobile data it tends to get warm pretty quickly even 30 seconds of usage this rim will get warm to touch next uh, 
This is by uh, Pervaz. He's asking, how is the battery life and is the US mode day to day? Thinking for my mom, how compact is the phone compared to the S22? Uh, I did, frankly, did not use the S22 that much. I used the S22 Plus, but I'm liking the compactness of this phone. This is very, very compact. I think that, that is one thing that I really liked on this one, 6.1 inch screen. And as you can see, it just completely fits in the hat. For example, this Nothing phone, I'm also testing this Nothing phone. Uh, this is big, that 6.6 .6 inch screen. So a lot wider. So yes, in that compactness, I would say I liked it so that way it's good UI no issues I did not notice any lag or anything but it's a 60 hertz display guys let's just get it right it's a 60 hertz display so yes if you are not used to 120 hertz displays you will not find a problem with this one the first day I used the smartphone I noticed that slight lagginess in the UI because I was used to 120 hertz and I was even using the ROG phone at 165 hertz so my eyes to get used to it, it took me a day. Now it's six days, I just don't notice it. But yeah, whenever I pick up the Nothing phone and especially in Twitter field and the UI scroll, definitely the Nothing phone is feels a lot more fluid because this is having a 120 hertz screen. This is having a 60 hertz screen. But screen-wise, I've seen a lot of people making a hoopla out of it. I don't have a problem. It's a okay screen, not a deal breaker, but yeah, it's not a 120 hertz or a 90 hertz screen. I wish it was a 90 and a, uh, or even a 120 hertz screen. But yeah, the fact is it's a 60 hertz screen. Uh, this is uh, my Prohat. Uh, how, how, how many updates does Google promise for this Pixel? Also, does the Tensor chip have any heating issues? Heating issues have already spoken. Yes, uh, regarding the updates, this will uh, get next three years of Android upgrades and next five years of security upgrade. So that way you don't have to worry, man. It's a Google phone. So you have the guarantee of Google. So in terms of updates, you don't have to worry. In fact, this will get the updates first. In fact, Android 13, this should get very, very soon. Uh, moving to the next one. This is by uh, Mr. Sharma. Some reviewers have found uh, UI to be laggy when compared to a uh, 60 hertz phone. Did you notice that? Camera sensor uses the same one in the old Pixel phone. How is the image quality compared to other brands? Okay, first let's talk about the image quality. The image quality is good. Yes, it's old uh, IMX36T3 uh, 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 sensor, which was used in fact in Pixel 2. So yes, it's an old sensor, but again, I think so the whole magic, what it is doing is because of the AI processing uh, that it uh, does. And I think so the tensor chip is helping in that. That way, the pictures that you get are actually really good. But I noticed one thing in some, some areas, I've noticed that the white balance, if you have a mix of colors is actually not that good on this one. Sometimes it's struggling with the white balance in some uh, situations, especially indoors. For example, I took the same picture uh, with the Nothing phone and this one, the Nothing has a new sensor I, I think so new Sony sensor seven six something something uh, whereas this is old again the picture quality on both of them were good but in terms of colors uh, this one near the TV if you notice the side by side it was giving a bluish uh, tone but that was not the reality the reality was very close to what it was on the nothing phone so I've noticed some things but overall if you don't compare side by side uh, if you're just using the smartphone the, you'll be happy uh, with the camera I'll assure you that if you take 15 snaps, 14 will come out very good and you will just post it without any issues. So it's all about the image processing. But yeah, it is high time now. Uh, Google stops putting this very old camera sensor on the smartphone. Again, yes, Google is uh, flexing their AI power with old sensors also what we can do. But it's high time uh, they put better sensors on their new smartphones. Okay, let's move to the next one. This is by Vinod. So what's your opinion about the in-display optical fingerprint reader uh, in the Pixel 6 a It is reliable and secure as ultrasonic fingerprint sensor used in flagship devices like S22 Ultra. Yes, you don't have to worry, man. This is having the Google's M2 Titan chip. Security is a very high concern on this. This is not a gimmick like a Chinese smartphone or something like that. Let's get it very right. And yes, it will be as secure as Samsung. In fact, even more second secure like that. That's why uh, the fingerprint scanner, if you just do like this, some of the Chinese phone, if you just do like this and unlock, this will not. You have to hold it for half a second. I think so. And even on the some of the Samsung smartphones, uh, it's not like the Chinese phones, like if you just do this, it will unlock. There also, you have to hold it for a quarter or of a second. And that's the same case with this. For fingerprint scanner, I don't have a problem. If I have a problem and if it's buggy or it's not resisting, I would have complained. But I, frankly speaking, I don't have a problem with the fingerprint scanner. Yes, if you compare it to some of the Chinese phones or even OnePlus, you just do like that, it unlocks. This will not do that. See, it will not do that. Here, 
quarter of a second you have to do that if, if you are okay with that fine but in terms of security don't worry about it man it, it has that uh, titan chip on this one for security so mm, don't worry about it this is missed, uh, by Das is 60 Hertz. Okay, I've got this question so many times with so many of you. So I'm going to take about this one. Is 60 Hertz and 120 Hertz more visible to eye difference or it's just a pl placeable? Thinking of purchasing the Pixel 6. I currently the uh, iPhone uh, 11 uh, using, but that 60 Hertz doesn't feel choppy as other reviews claim in comparison to the 120 Hertz. Uh, okay, let's talk about the iPhone. The iPhone on... Uh, is actually the whole UI is optimized for 60 Hertz. So I have the iPhone 13 Pro that is having the 120 Hertz. When I moved to the uh, iPhone 13 Pro, I didn't see a drastic difference in the UI difference uh, because iOS is mostly optimized for 60 Hertz. But on Android, uh, I would say the difference is a lot more between 60 Hertz and 120. It is evident. If I place both these phones side by side and I start scrolling around and moving within the UI, the 120 Hertz will feel a little bit smoother. But again, if you're just using this smartphone in isolation, for example, as I've told you, the first day, couple of hours, I noticed that I felt that the UI could have been smoother. But after a day, I stopped noticing that. But again, if I pull this phone or let's say a ROG phone that has even higher refresh rate and I start scrolling, yes, these will feel a little bit smoother. That's a fact. But again, this is not a deal breaker if you're not comparing side by side with other phones having a higher refresh rate. It's like you have a 350cc bike and you are comparing it with a 700cc bike. Is it fair? No. Let's get the fact. Yeah, that's higher a cc bike. So. It's okay. I wished, yes, at this price point, at least they should have given a 90 hertz. But yeah, the fact is that 60 hertz is there. And if you are not continuously or daily using a 120 hertz phone, you will not have a problem. But again, if you have two phones, let's say one is 120 hertz, one is, this is, uh, let's say this is your primary, but you have a secondary phone that's 120 hertz. Yes, you will notice it. You will notice it. But th that's a fact. It's not a deal breaker, but yes, Considering the price point of what this is and other manufacturers giving higher refresh rates and yes on Android Android uh, you notice that refresh rate difference a lot more compared to iOS as I've told you iOS is mostly optimized for 60 Hertz because oh, I if you look at the iOS ecosystem a very few devices are at 120 Hertz whereas that's not the case with Android and uh, Yes, then uh, you will notice a difference between 60 and 20. Let's let's not just uh, bluff about it but i feel it's not a deal breaker to be frank as i've told you the first day when i was using it i noticed that choppiness but now it's the sixth day i'm okay with it i just don't care about it okay this is by uh anjali he says you said in the unboxing that the stereo speakers on the pixel 6 is really amazing is it really that class apart yes at this price point if i compare with other android phones the a Pixel 6a has the best stereo speakers that I have seen. They are not only loud, but also has a, a slight depth. And also the haptic motor that it has is very, very well. So yes, among the Android smartphones, uh, this is good. For in fact, the Nothing phone also has stereo speakers. But this is simply, if I rate the stereo speakers of this one as 9 out of 10, this is like 5 out of 10. 5 or 5.5 out of 10. That's that, that big of a difference it is. So yes. Uh, so guys, these were the uh, common questions that I was getting uh, regarding this Pixel 6 AFAQ. I hope uh, this video helps you uh, making an informed decision if this smartphone is right for you or not. If you have still have more questions about this Pixel 6a, do post those questions in the comment section below because I will be posting my in-depth review of this one. And if I miss something, I'll try to include that in my review. Anyways, guys, if you're still not subscribed, to this youtube channel hit that subscribe button this is ranji and i hope to see you in my next video take care guys